So last time in the physics of condensation, we came up with the Kelvin equation, which describes the effect of the curvature of the radius of a droplet has on the saturation vapor pressure above that curved surface of pure water. And we determined that the curvature effect uh, caused the saturation vapor pressure over that curved surface to be much greater than over a plane surface of pure water. And that's denoted by this exponential function uh, where you have a correction factor for the uh, saturation vapor pressure over a plane surface of pure water. Uh, this correction factor is 2 times sigma, which is the surface tension of the water droplet, uh, R sub V, which is the uh, specific gas constant for water vapor, uh, rho L, which is the density of liquid water, T is the temperature, and R is the radius of the droplet. And what we usually do is we usually replace all of these uh, constants uh, with the constant A, where A is equal to 2 sigma over R sub V rho L T. And today what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the concept of the solute effect. So if we have a plain surface of pure water where all of these blue circles represent water droplets, you have a saturation vapor pressure over a plain surface of pure water. If we introduce impurities into the water, uh, in this case represented by these uh, black squares, which are particles, and this could be salt, or it could be sulfate, or it could be uh, nitrate, or it could be any one of a number of particles that are present in the atmosphere, um, you'll notice that it actually reduces the number of water molecules that are on this interface between the water droplet and the air, and that will consequently reduce the uh, likelihood of evaporation from the surface. And so what that means is that the saturation vapor pressure uh, over a plane surface of a solution will actually have a less, uh, so the, the saturation vapor pressure over this situation will be less than the saturation vapor pressure over a plane surface of pure water. And mathematically, uh, we can basically say that the saturation uh, vapor pressure over a solution droplet, which is what the prime denotes, uh, of, uh, as over a solution plane surface of uh, solution um, is equal to essentially the saturation vapor pressure over a plane surface of water times a correction factor. And this correction factor is 1 minus the number of molecules uh, of solute relative to the number of molecules of the liquid. Um, and if we want to expand that into something that's more useful, the number of molecules of the solute is equal to the mass of the solute uh, divided by the molecular weight of the solute times Avogadro's number times I, where I is the Van't Hoff factor, uh, which talks uh, basically about uh, whether or not a given species is soluble or not. Uh, for example, if you have a silicon dioxide uh, mineral dust particle, uh, so this is a, a silicon dioxide, it's not water soluble, and so it's going to have a Van't Hoff factor of 1. If you have a sodium chloride, when you put that into the water, it dissolves uh, in the solution and will end up with a Van't Hoff factor of 2. If you have ammonium sulfate, NH, for 2 uh, SO4. Uh, when this goes into solution, you end up with two ammonium ions and one sulfate ion, and that will have a Van't Hoff factor of 3. And so it really is looking at the number of ions that are available at this interface. And so this represents the number of uh, molecules, uh, or ions in this case, uh, that are present uh, at that interface divided by the number of uh, moles, excuse me, the number of molecules uh, uh, in that water droplet. But we know that the mass of the water droplet is 4 thirds pi r cubed rho L. Um, you multiply, you divide by the molecular weight of water and multiply by Avogadro's number, and you can get the number of molecules uh, that are uh, present there. And so mathematically, we can go ahead and rearrange that. You get 1 minus 3i the mass of the solute times the molecular weight of the water uh, over 1 divided by 4 pi, the uh, density of the liquid water times the molecular weight of the solute, 
um, times uh, r cubed. And we usually uh, write this uh, in a simplified form that e sub s prime of t of infinity is equal to e sub s t of infinity times 1 minus b over r cubed, where b is this uh, constant that's out here in front of this. So you'll see that the presence of the solute reduces the saturation vapor pressure over that plane surface of uh, a solution droplet. But we can now put this solute effect, uh, combine it with the curvature effect, to get the saturation vapor pressure over a curved surface of a solution droplet, which is what we actually have in the atmosphere. So putting it all together, we now have the saturation vapor pressure over a curved surface that is a solution droplet is equal to the saturation vapor pressure of pure water, uh, a plane surface of pure water, times a correction factor for the um, curvature effect, the exponent of A over R, times a correction factor for the solute effect, 1 minus B over R cubed. And to look at this graphically, <coughs> we have R on this axis, we have the saturation ratio on this axis, where a saturation ratio of 1 is equal to a relative humidity of 100%. Um, so this is the 100% relative humidity line. Um, e sub s of t of r, which is our curvature effect, this equation back here, Kelvin's equation, um, is basically like this. It's an exponential function that asymptotes out at the um, saturation vapor pressure, uh, excuse me, the saturation ratio of 1. And then we have the uh, solute effect, which basically always reduces the um, critical uh, saturation, the saturation ratio at equilibrium. And this is E sub s the prime of t of infinity, which is given by this equation right here. But for our solution droplet, when we put it all together, you're basically adding these two lines together. And initially, it's the curvature effect that starts to have the overall influence on the uh, saturation vapor pressure over the droplet. But as you get to smaller and smaller radii, um, the fact that this is uh, r cubed versus r inside the exponent, um, the solute effect starts to win. And there'll be an inflection point right here denoted by this dot, at which point the solute effect becomes the dominant term. And in fact, it drives the equilibrium saturation vapor pressure uh, for this system down below a saturation, vapor, uh, saturation ratio of 1. And so the blue curve is the actual curve that equilibrium curve that our droplets experience in the Earth's atmosphere. And so what it does is by having a impurity in the droplet, it dramatically reduces the saturation ratio required for co the condensation process. Up here, it required an infinitely high uh, saturation ratio in order to begin the condensation process. But when you have an impurity, it no longer requires an infinitely high uh, saturation ratio. In fact, um, it can, the condensation process can actually begin at uh, saturation ratios less than 1, which means at relative humidities less than 100%. You can actually have condensation onto particles in the atmosphere. And that's one of the ways that we can actually, one of the ways you can actually see this is on a day that has high humidity, high relative humidities, the visibility is much more poor than it is on days when it's dry. Because the particles that are there, that are water soluble at least, uh, are uptaking water and growing into what we call haze droplets. <clears throat> we define any droplet that has a uh, radius that is smaller than the critical radius, which is the inflection point in the Kohler curve. Um, this is what we call a Kohler curve. So any droplet that exists at equilibrium in the environment and has a radius less than the critical radius on the Kohler curve, we refer to as a haze droplet. And any droplet in the atmosphere that has a critical radius greater than the inflection point on the Kohler curve, we refer to as cloud droplets. So that is the boundary between cloud droplets and haze droplets. Um, and we're going to do a lot of uh, examples with the Kohler curve, uh, trying to identify what types of particles uh, have the smallest uh, uh, critical uh, saturation ratio, 
Uh, if they have a small critical super saturation ratio, then they're a very good cloud condensation nuclei. Uh, if they have a very high uh, critical saturation ratio, then they are not a very good cloud condensation nuclei. And we're going to be doing a lot of examples with that. And a very good mathematical exercise for you to do, in fact, I'll probably assign it as a homework, is to take this equation and rewrite it in its most common form, where E sub S of prime of T of R is approximately equal to the saturation vapor pressure of pure water over a plane surface of water times this correction factor, uh, 1 plus A over R minus B over R cubed. Uh, and in order to do that uh, transformation, you're going to have to use uh, the series expansion for the exponential function. And just to recall, the exponential function of x is equal to 1 plus x uh, over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot 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 uh, out to infinity x to the n divided by n factorial. And that would be a really good mathematical exercise uh, for you to do.